get to the money. Welcome to another episode of Drinking After Dark, a podcast where we discuss random topics while having a few drinks. I'm your host, Darius, and as always, drink responsibly. And y'all make sure y'all follow Drinking After Dark podcast on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And y'all make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe to Drinking After Dark podcast YouTube channel. Uh, tonight, I'm drinking on my usual Crown World Vanilla mixed with uh, Dr. Pepper Cream Soda. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, we're going to get into this. I was going to uh, kind of talk about this a little bit last episode, but um, I'm going to talk about it to, tonight with you guys. Um, y'all know me. Y'all know I love sports very much. And um, this particular uh, documentary that came out on Max, formerly known as HBO Max, um, has been getting a lot of attention, all right? So to give you a backstory, it's a documentary called BS High. All right, so basically it's a story about uh, Bishop Sycamore. Now, for those who don't know, Bishop Sycamore uh, pretty much gained national attention, right? National attention uh, by playing IMG Academy, which is probably the number one ranked well, we're talking football. All right, let's let's talk football, okay? Because basketball, they're, I mean, listen, they're dominant as well in basketball, but let's take the football. Uh IMG Academy is probably probably the number one ranked team in the entire country, always ranked one, two, or three every year in the country. Um, nothing but full of division one prospects, you know, the training facilities and everything they have going on down there is better than a lot of colleges, all right. Um which ironically they got bought out, but I'm gonna tell you how much they got bought out later. But uh Bishop Sycamore played IMG Academy, IMG Academy on ESPN, nationally televised game, and basically got demolished. Okay, let's just let's put it this way. It wasn't even a game at all. It was kind of like it was kind of like watching a college team versus a junior varsity team that took it easy on them. Even with the score, uh, I think it was like fifty-eight to zero, if I remember correctly. But uh, <laughs> a couple of years later, we got a documentary based on that particular game and how uh, a particular coach got their way onto a national platform. All right, so. Uh, Bishop St- Sycamore was started by Roy Johnson. Roy Johnson and uh, who's the other founder? Andre Peterson. Uh, so, but basically, it was Roy Johnson's idea. He wanted to be, he wanted to have a program that rivaled an IMG Academy, right? Um, and some of the great programs in high school football, right? With the mission of giving um underprivileged kids a chance to go and play on the next level. All right. Which is not a bad um bad idea to have. You know, we all want to start something to help others get to that next level. So I'm not gonna fault him for that. All right. But the issue is is that the execution and everything that went around it is what caused um the issues with uh, Roy Johnson, okay? So the the documentary, BSI, which is on Max, so uh, I'm going to talk about it, which is a great documentary, by the way. Um, interviewed, you know, some of the coaches, well, really mainly Roy Johnson and some of the players, um, 
that attended Bishop, Bishop Sycamore. Uh, so their experiences, I'll talk, I'm going to talk about the kids' experiences first. Their experience was, in their best way, was hell. The best way they described it was hell. All right. Um, they were lied to. They were scammed. They were um, used in a sense, you know, and all of that. And Bishop Sycamore uh, was based out of Ohio. Okay. So for those who don't know, Bishop Sycamore was based out of Ohio. Now, Roy Johnson, to be honest, he, if he would have used his gift for good, I think this wouldn't even be a problem. But he kind of used it in a different way. All right. So he recruited these players. Uh, some of these players were some good players. Um, but everything sound like a scam. All right. So Bishop Sycamore, although they registered, they really weren't even in real school. Okay, so these kids didn't even go to class. They stayed up in hotels after hotels. Um, and yeah, I think everything was kind of like in their name too, in a sense, because they were getting eviction notices and on their credit, you know, they had eviction notices here and there. It's kind of like why they get an eviction notice if they were, it's a whole different story. So they didn't go to class. Uh, what I said, the school was located at. No, it it wasn't even a school at all. Okay. It was no school at all. It was just basically a dream to get players to um, play, I guess, to show college NFL that he could recruit, he can coach, maybe get to that level where he could do all of that. Come to find out he really couldn't coach either. All right. Cause here's the thing. When it comes to players, players will always have a respect for a coach, right? What they always do as a former athlete myself, when I see some of my former coaches, I always say, hey, what's going on, coach? So-and-so, right? That's how you address them. There's always coach to you. These players didn't even call them coach. They just call them Roy. So that lets you know that they don't even really respect you as a coach, okay? And, um, you know, it was a. they start off with a different name. I forgot. They start off with a different name, and then they changed it to Bishop Sycamore. A little later on, but after watching this documentary, right? After watching this documentary, I just felt like this guy screwed everybody around him. Everybody around him. And he took advantage of um, kids. He, I think, here's the thing. He even took, I think he took advantage of some coaches. I mean, this guy got lost. It's like crazy, right? unpaid debt, this and that, you know. So basically these parents trusted this guy to help their kids get to the next level. And I'm going I'm to say this right now. I'm going to blame the parents too because in a way you got to do more of a research, right? Anytime a, a school like um, any schools come in trying to recruit your kid, first thing they kind of want to do is bring you to the, to the school and – Basically like college, right? Recruit you, recruit you, show you around the campus, show you around the facilities and things like that, and let you know everything is going to be good. Not only is going to get a great education, but, you know, he's going to have the best chance of going playing on the next level. Not, necess- not necessarily D1, but it could be D2, you know, or even Division three. It's just a chance for them to play on the next level and continue on with their education. That's how it should be. But – these players and these uh, parents never took a trip to this particular school and checked out the facilities and everything like that. So that was, to me, that's kind of like, you know, what parent would do that? You know, so I got, I got blaming these parents too for, you know, in a way kind of putting their kids in this situation. Um, but you kind of feel bad for the kids in this cause they, they were told a lie. Now, um, Roy Johnson, I'm going to move around a little bit, but when Roy Johnson got the game on ESPN against IMG Academy, ESPN, after the game was over, and really during the, prod- uh, during the, uh, during the uh, 
game itself, it was a live game. ESPN was taking a huge hit, a huge PR hit, right? Because one, this game was trash. Game should have never been televised. Two, the game. Roy Johnson said he had Division One talent on his team. He had uh, those who were being recruited by Division One football uh, with Division One schools and everything. wasn't even confirmed, right? And when they were looking down on their notes, they're like, "Who uh, number so and so is down?" But we don't even have that. You know, on our notes or anything like that. Who are these players? This and that. So it was just a big thing. So ESPN took a huge hit from everybody, right? So from ESPN themselves, for those who used to work at ESPN, you know, they kind of like, oh, now we got something to talk about. Uh, those who have their own sports podcasts and things like that took a huge, huge hit um, with this particular game. All right, and not only that, they played a game like two days prior to this big national televised game against the best team in the country. Okay. And football players need rest more than 48 hours, especially playing, you know, you're going hard, you're playing tackle football, your body needs time to recover. Right. You got these players out here who really didn't get a chance to recover because you got to think, you got a game, you got a game one day, and then a couple of days later, you got another game going against them. So all of it was just wrong from the beginning. And I'm surprised that not one parent even, like, raised suspicion about what is really going on here? Like when you call up your kid, like, so how are your grades? You did not see any grades coming. That's why I say I go back to the parents too, not just the coach, but to the parents, because usually, you know, if kids, kids aren't supposed to be in school, you're supposed to see some grades. You're supposed to see some grades. These parents haven't even said they've seen any grades. So what's going on? What's exactly is going on? with this situation as a parent myself, you know, even though my, uh, my child's in elementary school, I could see her grades online. Right. It ain't like the old days where, you know, you get a piece of paper, your kids can hide it. No, I have everything access from my phone, right. Her grades, I could check her grades and leave it at that. Did the parents even ask about the grades? Or that was worried about football. And then Roy Johnson, when he recruited, he really didn't recruit the best. No disrespect to these players. Because some could play. Some had the talent to play on the next level. But when you're recruiting, you just recruited kids from the neighborhood. Right? So you recruited players that you know you can manipulate. And then at the same time, got them doing some other stuff, which was just crazy. Right? In the documentary, they were talking about these kids, talking about they were going to be fed, and you know, this and that and the third. Really didn't happen. They actually had to go to stores and steal food and and water and all that stuff because they weren't um, getting the things that they were promised, right? So they had to do that. And not only that, but they had, a, uh, they had to pay tuition. Come to find out, they had to sign, um, I guess, this back during those times where the PPP loan was going on. And that's when uh, they were signing that stuff. And I guess they didn't receive any of the money because I guess the coaches got the money. Right? I guess the coaches got the money. And I was surprised, like, nobody caught on to that. So you signing away your name, not only that, but you're giving out, you know, some – Important information like your social security and all of that stuff to obtain money that you will never see. So all this money, where is this money going? Right? Where all this money going? And not only that, not only that, but when you go to any institution, right, 
they have their own field where they practice on. You don't rent a place to practice, you know, so they're practicing at some complex, which is crazy, which is crazy to me because it's like, okay, are you a real team or you're not a real team? Come to find out it was a team that was real, but not at the same time. Okay. This particular school has not graduated. Not one kid. Not one kid at all. Kids are getting evictions and their name is on their report, you know, and all of that stuff. Kids don't know about it. You felt bad for the kids. Now to the coach, uh, Roy Johnson. Um, Roy Johnson, to me, and this is just my honest opinion, right? I don't care. This guy should never be involved in youth, high school youth sports ever again for what he has done. One, I don't think he ever will be because his name um, is tarnished because of this and everything like that. And uh, the things that he has done and has been exposed, guarantee you nobody's going to touch him. All right. But with that being said, um, I, when I watched the documentary, I felt like uh, Roy Johnson was more like a psychopath. You know, he was a guy that, that didn't care for anyone who truly didn't want to help anybody. In my opinion, I just think that, and not, not only that, but I felt like he never took accountability for what he has done. You know, you never took accountability for what you have done. And I just think that that when you lose respect from the players, even at that age, you lose respect from the players, it, it goes to show you that, okay, not only from the players, but from the parents. Because they trusted you. They trusted you with their kids. And now they're like, this is how you do us. This is how you do us, right? So I just think that the way he comes across is this guy that when you look at him, it, it is like, no. Nah. So, and when he was speaking and when he was talking, um you kind of knew it was like, nah, you can't trust this guy. You just can't. You know, and he, funny thing about it was he wasn't even trying to hide it. Right? He wasn't even sorry for what he's done. Right? And I just I just felt that this goes to show you that when you're a parent out there who, who has a kid that's an athlete, always do your research first on the coach, on the school, you know, and, you know, even get information, reach out to other kids, parents, or get their take on it, what you should do, what you, should, what you shouldn't do. And they didn't do that, and he took advantage of it, and there you go. He he basically getting everything that he wants. He wanted the attention. He wanted the ESPN national exposure. Now he got the documentary out. He's getting everything that he wants. And I don't know who's that other coach that was with him, Um but he, you could tell that he he doesn't want to take accountability for it either. It's like, in a way, he's saving himself by saving or staying by this guy, in a sense. So, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I don't get it. You know, it's, why would you even do something like that? And with all the lawsuits and everything he got, I have no idea. And here's the funny thing, going even back to that game. That game, now, first off, I didn't watch the game. I think it became national news because of what transpired, right? Because usually when you see uh, high school games, right, especially, you know, football games, uh, basketball games, it features the top teams in the country or usually features um, top prospects, Right. That's how they put, you know, this is how the kids, you know, get the exposure. Either you're a top prospect, you know, in the country or you're part of, you know, a top team in the country. That's what they put on TV. This is how bad Bishop Sycamore was. 
in terms of their operations and the organization and everything. When you're a team, you're supposed to have the proper training staff on standby, right? That's what you're supposed to have. They didn't even have that. The quarterback's mother basically said, yeah, I'm, I guess she the trainer. She wasn't, she wasn't that. She, she was put in a bad position, right? Put in a bad position. Not only that, but three of the players got hurt. One towards ACL, they didn't send him out. They put him back on there and went to go get checked out. Found out he tore his ACL. Two guys tore their ACL. I think another one, uh, I think it was an ankle injury or something like that. Put them back on the field to risk even more damage. What's that goes to show you? These guys are not trained. They're not trained. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm a parent, if I was a parent, I'm sitting up there watching this game. I know it's nationally televised and everything. But if I see what's going on, automatically I'm like, no, get your ass off the field. We're going home. We're leaving this situation. Let's go. We're not dealing with this. We're not dealing with this. And here's the sad part about that particular game. You recruited a JUCO player. Basically, you got a grown man playing on your team, which is already illegal anyway because you can't be no older than 19 years old uh, to play, right? That's kind of like high school all around the country, right? And you still – you have multiple, multiple 20-plus-year-olds on your team. Think about that. You have multiple 20-plus-year-olds on your team. They said, yeah, some that got out of jail, you know, some coming from JUCO. You know, go watch the documentary. How do a team with grown men on it get beat? I'm going to say this again. Get beat by a bunch of 15, 16, 17, 18-year-olds. Think about that. You got grown men getting beat by 16, 17, 18-year-olds. It's, it's, it's just too, it's just, the whole documentary was just sad to watch because even when the players called out their coach, he never once said to him, I'm sorry if you feel like that. I don't think he keep thinking about all the things that I've done for you instead of saying all the things I took advantage of before. That's that's what gets me, right? And uh, the fact that it kind of makes me mad when you see adults not being responsible for Especially, you know, when you, when it comes to uh, player safety and everything like that. Because let's just be honest. If something was to happen to one of those kids, right, who was trained on their staff to go straight into action? Nobody. Nobody was trained. So you got these kids out here basically, it's kind of like uh, without a harness nest, right? If something was to happen, Coaches don't know what to do. Oh, you're not hurt. Get back out there. Instead of protecting the kid from themselves, which is your primary job is the safety of these kids, you said go back out there. You laughing on the sideline, getting your ass whooped, and and nobody can see this. And the fact that I know the parents had to be there. Some of the parents had to be there. Ain't no way I'm allowing my kid to go back into that situation. At all. Ain't no way I'm going to let my kid get embarrassed because this guy out here don't know what he's doing in front of the world to see basically tarnishing my my kid's name for their own personal gain. That's what it is. Like I said, man, I felt bad for the kids out there, man. Like, once again, go watch that documentary and everything like that. Um, These kids were attacked on social media, which was wrong on so many levels because they didn't deserve this. Ain't got nothing to do with them. I'm pretty sure those who attacked them 
after they saw the documentary, they're probably like, dang, we didn't know the whole situation, which, you know, we live in a time where people just automatically react and they don't wait for everything to come out. Um, But yeah, I mean, he wasn't, Roy Johnson wasn't certified by Ohio to pretty much be a, <laughs> be a coach. Let's just say it like that. They were investigating him um, for a minute and then, all come crumbling down. Even the governor of Ohio lost an investigation. But here's the thing: there was uh, there's no laws to what he was doing. What that was deemed illegal. Morally, was it incorrect? Yes, but it wasn't illegal, so they couldn't really do anything about it. Um, which is which is crazy to me, right? It was just real crazy to me, and everything like that. You no, know, they were talking about in the documentary how uh uh the coach Ron Johnson Roy Johnson, I'm sorry, uh basically committed domestic violence in front of his players and everything, then bragged about it in the car. They talked about that, uh, talked about how he ran over some geese on purpose and then backed it up and did it again. No remorse. You know, that that right, right there lets you know, like, okay, this dude is not right. Wasn't right, and I just think that. You know, like I said, y'all can go back and watch this documentary, man, because this documentary um, pretty much it showed who he who he really is, and he was unapologetic about it. Which is to me is a shame though, because something like this should have been, you know, somebody. And it was one guy basically like, yo, who pretty much kind of like help jump started but he kind of like nah I'm out and he was in the documentary as well and he was like but he he caught on early on with what was going on and he like bounced so now from a documentary standpoint um it was a great documentary man it was one of the best documentaries I've seen in a long time and you know I think I think parents who have um kids who are athletes who are being recruited by um, these schools. And hit, and here's the thing. Um, he says something that absolutely doesn't make sense. Are you a high school or are you a prep school? He's trying to be a hybrid of both. You can't do that. Either you're a prep school or you're a high school. That's the way That's the way it usually is. And he didn't even know how you want to present to school. So, but the message is for all those uh, parents who have athletes who are being uh, whose kids are being recruited to come to these uh, private schools and things like that. Do your research on it um, more than anything else, you know, even take a tour. I'm pretty sure they will invite you for a tour of the school to let you, for one, to let you know it's a real thing, it's a real opportunity and things like that. Of course, parents, your main focus on education um, and also, you know, in terms of uh, them getting a better chance of going on to the next level and continue on playing football and, continue to receive uh receive an education. So I think parents and um student athletes should sit down and watch this documentary and everything like that. Um ESPN and IMG Academy both declined for the um uh, declined for the documentary. I thought they probably should have done it because I think it would have even not so much IMG Academy, but ESPN. I think they could have, you know, kind of set the record straight. Nobody would be, you no know, faulting for whatever, but they did get played a little bit. So that's that. Um, before we go out of here, I saw something at the end of the documentary. I got to type this in real quick. Um, I think they somebody bought IMG Academy. Um. Let me see. So I didn't even know this, but it said right here the uh, American Holdings Company, Endeavor, owners of USC and owned the property since 2014. Um, let me see who owns it now. 
So the new owner is, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to read this real quick. So it says right here, uh, the Powerhouse Sports School, now former owner Endeavor Group Holdings, sold the school to Hong Kong based uh, BPEA Equity in an all cash deal for $1.25 billion. That's crazy. A school sold for $1.25 billion. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's crazy. I just want to bring that up. You know, but still, uh, great documentary. Go back and uh, watch it. Um, y'all tell me, if y'all watch the documentary, please comment below. Tell me how y'all feel about it. Uh, but yeah, it was just, it was just a, and like I said, this team was not good at all. This team was not good at all. So what that goes to show you, it was poorly coached, poorly ran. You know, it, it was just a bad, a bad, bad uh, situation, um, especially for those kids. So some of them turned out uh, pretty good. You know, some, you know, still finding their way, you know, so. Uh, wish you guys uh, much success to those kids. So um, before I get out of here, man, I just want to say uh, make sure y'all follow the Drinking After Dark podcast on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, new episodes are uploaded every Friday right here on YouTube. Or you can check it out on uh, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, man. So y'all check it out, man. Continue to tell your friends and family about it. Hey, appreciate all, all the love and the support, man. Y'all continue to show that to me. Till next time, I'm Darius from Drinking After Dark Podcast, and we out. Peace. Gotta get to the money. Gotta get to the money. Uh-huh. Gotta get to the money. Gotta get to the money. Early morning, so you know that I'm on. So you know that I'm on. Gotta make sure that my family is straight. Gotta make sure that my kids and me. Get to the money, get to the money, uh-huh.